I am an African. I owe my being to the hills and the valleys, the mountains and the glades, the rivers, the deserts, the trees, the flowers, the seas, and the ever-changing seasons that define the face of our native land. My body has frozen in our frosts and in our latter-day snows. It has thawed in the warmth of our sunshine and melted in the heat of the midday sun. The crack and the rumble of the summer thunders, lashed by startling lightning, have been a cause both of trembling and of hope. The fragrances of nature have been as pleasant to us as the sight of the wild blooms of the citizens of the felt. The dramatic shapes of the dragon's back, the soil-colored waters of the Likwa Ikreli, Notugel, and the sands of the Kalahati have all been panels of the set on the natural stage on which we act out the foolish deeds of the theater of the day. At times, and in fear, I have wondered whether I should concede equal citizenship of our country to the leopard and the lion, the elephant and the springbok, the hyena, the black mamba, and the pestilential mosquito. A human presence among all of these, a feature on the face of our native land just defined, I know that none dare challenge me when I say I am an African. I owe my being to the Koi and the sun whose desolate souls haunt the great expanses of the beautiful Cape. They who fell victim to the most merciless genocide our native land has ever seen. They who were the first to lose their lives in the struggle to defend our freedom and independence. And they who, as a people, perished in the result. Today, as a country, we keep an inaudible, an audible silence about these ancestors of the generations that live, fearful to admit the horror of the former deed, seeking to obliterate from our memories a, a cruel occurrence, which in its remembering should teach us not and never to be inhuman again. I am formed of the migrants who left Europe to find a new home on our native land. Whatever their own actions, they remain still part of me. In my veins courses the blood of the Malay slaves who came from the east. Their proud dignity informs my bearing, their culture a part of my essence. The stripes they bore on their bodies from the left of the slave master are a reminder embossed on my consciousness of what should not be done. <laughs> I am the grandchild of the warrior men and women that in Zanzi Kukuni led. The patriots that Tetrayon and Pepu took to battle. The soldiers Mushweshwe and Gungunyane taught never to dishonor the cause of freedom. My mind and my knowledge of myself is formed by the victories that are the jewels in our African crown. 
The victories we earned from Isandwane to Khartoum as Ethiopians, as the Ashanti of Ghana, as the Babas of the desert. I am the grandchild who lays flowers on the Boa graves at St. Helena, the Bahamas, and the Froa Monument, who sees in the mind's eye and suffers the suffering of a simple peasant folk, death, concentration camps, destroyed homesteads, and dream in ruins. I am the child of Nongnaose. I am he who made it possible to trade in the world markets in diamonds, in gold, in the same food for which our stomachs yearn. I come of those who were transported from India and China, whose being resided in the fact solely that they were able to provide physical labor, who taught me that we could both be at home and be foreign who taught me that human existence itself demanded that freedom was a necessary condition for that human existence. Being part of all of these people, and in the knowledge that none dares contest that assertion, I shall claim that I'm an African. I have seen our country torn asunder as these, all of whom are my people, engage one another in a titanic battle, the one to redress a wrong that had been caused by one to another, and the other to defend the indefensible. I have seen what happens when one person has superiority of force over another, when the stronger appropriate to themselves the prerogative even to annul the injunction that God created all men and women in his image. I know what it signifies when race and color are used to determine who is human and who subhuman. I have seen the destruction of all sense of self-esteem the consequent striving to be what one is not, simply to acquire some of the benefit which those who had imposed themselves as masters had ensured that they enjoy. I have experience of the situation in which race and color is used to enrich some and impoverish the rest. I have seen the corruption of minds and souls as a result of the pursuit of an ignoble effort to perpetrate a veritable crime against humanity. I have seen concrete expression of the denial of the dignity of a human being emanating from the conscious, systemic and systematic oppressive and repressive activities of other human beings. There the victims parade with no mask to hide the brutish reality. The beggars, the prostitutes, the street children, those who seek solace in substance abuse, those who have to steal to assuage hunger, those who have to lose their sanity because to be sane is to invite pain. Perhaps the worst among these who are my people are those who have learned to kill for a wage. To these, the extent of death is directly proportional to their personal welfare. And so, like pawns in the service of demented souls, they kill in furtherance of the political violence in KwaZulu-Natal. They murder the innocent in the taxi wars. They kill slowly or quickly in order to make profit from the illegal trade in narcotics. 
they are available for hire when husband wants to meet a wife and wife husband. Among us prowl the products of our immoral and amoral past. Killers who have no sense of the worth of human life. Rapists who have absolute disdain for the women of our country. Animals who would seek to benefit from the vulnerability of the children, the disabled and the old. The rapacious who brook no obstacle in their in their quest for self-enrichment. All this I know and I know to be true because I'm an African. And because of that, I'm also able to state this fundamental truth that I'm born of a people who are heroes and heroines. I am born of a people who would not tolerate oppression. I'm of a nation that would not allow that fear of death of torture, of imprisonment, of exile, or persecution should result in the perpetuation of injustice. The great masses who are our mother and father will not permit that the behavior of the few results in the description of our country and people as barbaric. Patient because history is on their side. These masses do not despair because today the weather is bad. Nor do they turn triumphalists when tomorrow the sun shines. Whatever the circumstances they have lived through, and because of that experience, they are determined to define for themselves who they are and who they should be. We are assembled here today to mark their victory in acquiring and exercising their right to formulate their own definition of what it means to be African. The Constitution whose adoption we celebrate constitutes an unequivocal statement that we refuse to accept that our Africanness shall be defined by our race our color, our gender, or our historical origins. It is a firm assertion made by ourselves that South Africa belongs to all who live in it, black and white. It gives concrete expression to the sentiment we share as Africans and will defend to the death that the people shall govern. It recognizes the fact that the dignity of, individu of the individual is both an objective which his society must pursue and is a goal which cannot be separated from the material well-being of that individual. It seeks to create a situation in which all our people shall be free from fear, including the fear of oppression of one national group by another, the fear of the disempowerment of one social echelon by another, the fear of the use of state power to deny anybody their fundamental human rights, and the fear of tyranny. It aims to open the doors so that those who are disadvantaged can assume their place in society as equals with their fellow human beings without regard to color, to race, to gender, to age, or to geographic dispersal. It provides the opportunity to enable each one and all to state their views, to promote them to strive for their implementation in the process of governance without fear that a contrary view will be met with repression. It creates a law-governed society which shall be inimical to arbitrary rule. It enables the resolution of conflicts by peaceful means rather than resort to force. 
It rejoices in the diversity of our people and creates the space for all of us voluntarily to define ourselves as one people.